without accepting parents, having no gay straight alliances in their schools and hometowns, living far away from the gay meccas of New York and San Francisco, and being far too young to enter a gay bar. How do queer youth like this know what it's like to be gay? How do they know what a coming out story is and how to have and tell one of their own? How do they know whether they are butch lesbians or femmes and how to act and dress accordingly? And finally, and perhaps most importantly, how do they know that they are not alone? With no physical spaces to turn to uh, in which to explore their identities, how do the many, many queer youth who fit this profile, perhaps the majority of queer youth in the United States, develop ideas about their identities? I ultimately answer the internet, a virtual space through which queer youth can get ideas about, uh, inform, practice, and otherwise fine tune their identities. But the inner working of what happens mediated by the screen is often overlooked as we may consider these aspects of ourselves and parts of our identities as innate, natural, authentic, um, or maybe even that we are born this way as Lady Gaga's hit single, for a long time the number one best-selling iTunes single of all time, might tell us. Um, but I'm here to tell you, among other things, that I think Lady Gaga might be wrong. I argue that we are the juncture in which born this way sensibilities, exemplified by these lyrics behind me, still very much dominate the cultural vocabulary surrounding what it means to be gay, at the same time that unprecedented numbers of people, and most importantly queer youth, are using the internet to inform their identities. Um, born this way sensibilities, or what I term the Gagaian model of sexual identity, tell us that identity, sexual identity is relatively simple. You don't become gay, but you're born gay. You just are. You're born that way, and there is no other way. There's one right track, and you know you're on it. Um, it's so simple that Gaga does not even care to elaborate on what that right track is in her song. <laughs> um, <laughs> So born this, way, born this Way sensibilities still are a huge part of what we think uh, sexual, sexuality means. Um, but I'm here to present instead a different concept, a concept that can help us complicate this Gagaian model of sexual identity. It's what I term queer self-making via the internet. Um, this concept was informed by some preliminary findings from my ethnography entitled Searching for Terms, Queer Self-Making via the Internet. Um, and so queer self-making via the internet as this term can be used as a tool to help us look at online interactions as not taking place through some vicarious, detached, uh, second, virtual second self, but instead can affect who we really think we are, even if we later view these selves as entirely, perfectly, and completely authentic. So for queer youth in my ethnography, I agree that this takes place in large part through what I term the queer database. The queer database, as I loosely define it, is the indefinite collection of all information on the internet concerning gay identity. It might include coming out stories on YouTube, uh, the It Gets Better campaign, um, the personal blogs, Twitters, Tumblrs, what have you, of queer individuals. Um, it might include gay celebrity gossip, information about HIV AIDS, countless other pages, far too many to name in this relatively short presentation. But what's important about the queer database is that it allows the exploration of an otherwise stigmatized topic um, in this relatively private way. And this is really important for queer youth who are still under the roofs of their parents and subject to any subsequent surveillance. This is a 24-hour way to gain access to this information. Um, and because of regular interaction with this information, um, queer youth can explore and try on different identities before they are out in a traditional public sense, before they commit to an identity. So maybe they realize that they're not gay, uh, but they're bisexual, but they still prefer one gender over another. Um, maybe they realize they're more of a butch and not a femme, and there are quizzes that you can take on this very topic that will give you an, a, a quick and easy answer. Um, or maybe they've learned to eschew these categories altogether, as they've learned of many others who have lived quite happily and successfully not conforming to one of these two poles in this kind of polarity model of lesbian identity. So because of this regular interaction with the stream of information, they often developed increasingly nuanced terms about their identities. The terms are disseminated through the internet, even though they might be kind of obscure to us. Um, and I would argue that an entire generation of queer youth 
have used the internet, utilized the internet to get these terms and to take on these terms for themselves in a way that might puzzle people from other generations, maybe even require a glossary. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about from my ethnography is uh, the internet as collective. In the age of socialization on the internet, identity making work is often not a process of self-discovery, but is rather a collective process. And this might sound confusing, uh, especially given our conception of the closet and the closeted gay person. Because a closet is called a closet, ostensibly because it is very dark and very lonely, and only one person can fit in it because closets are small, right? Uh, but aren't closets getting bigger these days anyway? <laughs> With walk-in closets basically becoming the norm? And this might sound like a joke, but I would argue that the closet from which gay people come out is also getting larger as people turn to the internet to get ideas about their identities before they are out in a traditional sense. It is often collective interpretive work. Uh, one post I see a lot on this message board is a post that goes like this. If I feel emotion X about person of Y gender, does that mean I am Z identity category? It might sound like these are just a few hopelessly confused individuals who have no real sense of self, but I see this post so often that it makes me wonder. I find these kind of posts fascinating when we think of identity as a process of self-discovery. And to go back to the idea of the closet, when we think of the closeted gay person, the closeted gay person struggles alone with his sexuality until one day he can't hold it in anymore, accepts himself and decides to come out and go on the road to Lady Gaga's right track. This is obviously a very different process. Um, and going back to the queer database that I spoke of earlier, there are countless numbers of YouTube videos on, on the topic of the coming out story. The sheer number of them lets us know that this is not an individual phenomenon. This is not one trajectory and one, this is not one narrative that other people have no part in. We don't have these separate lives, but instead the narrative of the coming out story is repeated five million, six million times on YouTube alone. Um, so this brings us to a sort of juncture. Um, I, as I said, the, the closet, is it a walk-in closet? Or do we have to get rid of the category of the closet altogether? We can clearly see that Gagayan models fail to capture the ways that these identities are arrived at. So here's the paradox. People ask other people online for information that is supposedly innate to them. People use other people's innate trajectories, perhaps in the form of the coming out story, to inform and sometimes re redirect and rechart their own supposedly innate trajectories. People are looking up information online about being gay, yet they haven't accepted themselves and they're not out. And people are talking, gay people go online and they talk to other gay people online, yet they're all somehow in the closet because they're not out in the traditional public sense. So this is clearly why we need a new model. So to go back to Gaga's song, what is this right track? Um, another queer youth on, in my ethnography often turn to this message board once some degree of outness or at least self-acceptance is achieved to learn how to be visibly gay. I was struck by this one example. Um, it was, there was a 15 year old uh, teenage girl who uh, attended a Catholic boarding school and she was a lesbian. And she wanted to know a subtle way to let her classmates know, you know, that she was gay. And the advice that everyone gave her was wear a rainbow bra bracelet, wear rainbows, right? Um, they seemed to not have come up with many other ideas. And she was distressed. She was distressed because her school uniform would not even allow her to wear rainbows. And it's one thing to have one person on one message board tell you to wear rainbows. But it's quite another to see a similar message plastered all over the internet when you have very limited knowledge of, of gayness and gay identity from elsewhere. Um, another thing that people often ask is that people say they're lonely in their conservative small towns or high schools, and they want to know, how do I meet other gay people in real life? And the answer is almost always a resounding, go to the nearest big city. <laughs> and that's the only advice that people have for these people. But so now I ask, let's look beyond the Gagayan model and ask, is there another way? So Gaga's song might be helpful, even if I believe it's problematic. Many people probably do feel that they were born that way. They relate to the song, and it makes them feel less alone. And that's great. Um, but 
kind of like Born This Way, there are also good parts and bad parts to the internet um, in terms of queer identity. While it does grant unprecedented access to queer social spaces, virtual or otherwise, to people who might not otherwise be able to talk to or meet with uh, other gay individuals in their communities, it does tend to remote certain hegemonic and overarching narratives about sexual identity. The idea that there is one right track to be gay and it means wearing rainbows and going to cities. And this can be problematic. But what I want to emphasize is that we can deconstruct this model. We can deconstruct gay identity in a way that does not invalidate the authenticity, question the authenticity or invalidate the, the, these identities that feel very real to people, but instead to potentially disrupt these overarching and overwhelming narratives that dominate these ideas and to look at the more complex processes that inform them. Not everyone can achieve the right track and the right way that Lady Gaga is saying, and there might in fact be multiple ways. Thank you.